guys, Mitchell here. Uh, Mitchell in Minnesota is my channel name, as you can see by the name on the channel. Um, so, uh, first and foremost, I'm trying something new with lighting. Um, so, we'll see how that goes on the lighting front. We'll see. Um, I think my f you can see me a little bit better than in my previous video, which was only my first video. This is only my second video. So, you know, we're learning new things as we go. Um, this video, um, this whole channel is kind of dedicated more or less to um, my journey through weight loss surgery, um, as well as things I'm doing in my weight loss journey, i.e. Uh, vitamin reviews and what things look like from my perspective versus maybe yours or people that you know or people that I know or anything like that. So um, this this um, video is going to be about some of the specific things, you know, what's in my bariatric Bible, um, also called my patient handbook. Um, and I'll go with that here in a minute, but just to get some stats out of the way. Um, currently, I am 261 pounds um, with a goal weight of 180, I believe, is what I put down for my wanted goal weight. Anything under 200 is is awesome. It makes me very excited to think about that. Um, I am a lap band er. I have a lap band. I had a lap band placed in in 2011. Um, lost about 115 pounds and now am after having some complications, having to have the saline taken out of my lap band, have gained about 91 pounds back over the last year. Um, so very frustrating. Well, since March of seven, 2017 when I had that. So it's a, about a year and five months. Um, <clears throat> so we will go into, uh, into what I have in my patient handbook and go from there. Okay guys, so um, everybody, when if, if you're not um, familiar with the process of how it goes with weight loss surgery, um, usually, I assume, because I've seen it in all the videos and myself, you will get some sort of handbook or paperwork, extended paperwork, um, in your first or second visit. For me, my first visit, which was fantastic, um, I got to talk to the doctor for over an hour, just about stuff, and it was really, really helpful. Um, at my first visit, I got my patient handbook, which I will refer to more or less as my Oh, that is very bright. I apologize. As my bariatric Bible, um, because it has pretty much anything you could ever need in it, as far as before, during, after, and forever kind of a thing. Um, I think that uh, one of my favorite YouTubers right now, my weight loss surgery YouTubers, uh, Mini Me in Tennessee, Lisa. She did, she's shown her, her folder a few times, her bariatric Bible a few times, and she even did a video on what she follows in it, sort of a thing. So it's really interesting. Check that out, Mini Me in Tennessee. Um, but for me, I've checked, um, tabbed a few things I wanna talk about because a lot of it's pretty standard, um, but is what it is. So again, um, Oh, I totally forgot this stat at the beginning. My surgery will be on August 7th, my birthday, uh, 2018. And I will be having my surgery with my my surgeon, Dr. Jeffrey Fazen, at uh, St. Joseph Hospital in St. Paul, Minnesota, where I live. So I'm just going to kind of look down for a second. So the first thing that I really wanted to kind of talk about was um, the... Um, ah, Caffeine, because as a proud Washingtonian born and raised outside of Seattle, um, in a small town called North Bend, um, caffeine and coffee and ca caffeinated drinks and things is a rite of passage in, in Washington state. And I think the Pacific Northwest is as a whole and large. Um, so I've seen so many things on different um, uh, different channels and different different YouTubers are saying different things because that's what their bariatric Bible and their doctors tell them. I, remember, I am in no way, shape, or form a medical professional. I am 
some guy sitting in his dining room doing a YouTube video. Uh, but you have to go by what your doctor says. So my doctor, um, it says, say goodbye to caffeine. That's, that's a hard one. Um, cause even with my lap band, my doctor allowed me to have caffeine after about six months. So, um, what I found was interesting and the reasoning behind it, I'll read you a little bit of it. Um, caffeine is a diuretic, therefore it can dehydrate you. You will need to increase, increase your water intake to 12 ounces for every eight ounces of caffeine you drink, which would make sense because we can only going to be, you can only drink so much after having had, um, a weight loss surgery specifically, um, the VSG or the Rune White. Uh, caffeine can interfere with your body's absorption of iron and can cause stomach pouch irritation, which could lead to an ulcer. Caffeine is also a stimulant, uh, well, can stimulate your appetite, causing you to want to eat more and return to snacking. Um, it's difficult for many people to say goodbye to caffeine, but it will help you to become healthier. Remember, decaffeinated does not mean caffeine free. I did not know that. Two cups of caffeine, decaffeinated beverage equal one cup of caffeinated beverage. So that's, that is one of the harder ones I think for myself like uh, I really I'm sitting here right now with a cup of coffee so it's it's part of who I am as a person but this is what my doctor at, and my surgeon and at my hospital are telling me to do other people say other people's doctors say hey have some have some coffee after six months or a year or whatever the case may be unfortunately for me my doctor said no more done um, insurance. I just want to touch on insurance for a second. Um, you have to get all of your insurance um, squared away. And I know for some people, um, your insurance will make you do um, a six-month supervised diet. I did not have to do that because um, I have dysphagia, which is like vomiting and an inability to swallow um, due to the lap band. Um, but my insurance did want a few things. I had to go through the rigmarole in a, in a different way with different different uh, things. Um, but what I will say is uh, that some people have to have their lap band pulled first or lap band removed first, not pulled out. That'd be horrifying. And then another separate surgery for their um, weight loss surgery. Um, for me, I'm lucky enough. I'm having, as long as everything goes well during surgery, I'm having the band removed and the revision to gastric bypass ruin Y on the same day. So my, uh, I've had an upper endoscopy twice now and my surgeon is very confident that everything's good. In fact, I've seen things that I wouldn't even have considered because, you know, as far as like calcification or other things on there that kind of screw with your, your um, chances of success at that time. So very good on that way. Um, about, 30 days before um, surgery, if you are on any type of appetite suppression medicine, you have to stop. And I am not now, but I was after I had the saline taken out of my lap and I went and saw my doctor and my primary and I panicked because I was like, I'm not, ha there's no restriction. I'm not having any of the, um, the stopping. I can't stop, um, you know, yada, yada. And he said, okay, I'm going to prescribe you fentramine and um, frick, fentramine, and what's the other medication? Ah. Um, but fentramine specifically is um, an appetite suppressant, and it um, is very helpful. Oh, and topramate, top or topamax, I guess is what you call it. Appetite suppressant and um, metabolism increaser or whatever. And that's something that my surgeon, surgeon and his office will do for correct circumstances. I stopped it a couple months ago because it just wasn't working the way I wanted it to. So, um, so yeah, if you're on anything like that, they say you have to stop it. And then, um, uh, I had a question and please leave comments in the, um, in the area below. Um, I have to go off of after you have Rune Y. Um, no more ibuprofen or Aleve or Advil or anything like that. Tylenol only. Um, it's not, an, I think it's NSAIDs or NSAIDs or whatever. NSAIDs? I don't know. Um, 
Tylenol doesn't necessarily work for me that well. I think it's something that I'll have to get used to, but has anybody had any, have you out there, you, have you had the surgery and are, is there something else that there, that I haven't been recommended to, or is there another type of um, pain medication, like headache type thing that I can use besides Tylenol? That's my question for that. Last but not least, vitamins. As my book says, um, taking your vitamins easy as one, one, two, two. So all of our vitamin regimens are probably similar, um, but I know for mine, um, I had to order a uh, special vitamin sublingual vitamins under the tongue or chewable or you know, dissolvable. So I have to take a uh, sublingual vitamin B12, uh, a multivitamin with iron in it. Some surgeons don't want you to take it with iron in it. They want you to get the ones without it. My surgeon wants me to have the one with iron and calcium citrate and vitamin D. So those are four daily medications on top of whatever else I'm taking or you know you are taking sort of a thing. Um, and what is actually interesting, I talked to my nutritionist today, I actually had to messenger, message her on the MyChart app. I don't know if you've used that or if your hospital uses it, ask them about MyChart, it's fantastic. Um, so calcium citrate is the only thing that needs to be taken separately about two hours after, but my nutritionist says, She's like, you know what, if, if you're not going to take it after two hours of taking your multivitamin, take it. it. It's better than not taking it all in missing doses. So I'm really going to try to hit that. I've downloaded a couple apps um, to kind of help me remind, rem remember to do that. And I'm just going to have to keep calcium citrate in my car and my bedroom and house and work. Um, it sucks because I go all over Minneapolis <laughs> for work, but it is what it is. Um, and that's uh, a different... A story all in itself and so those are the, the the things I really wanted to talk about in the patient handbook your bariatric Bible that are that really stood out to me as different uh, or different or important different being from other things that I've seen on YouTube or an important just because they're important it's very important to um, read this thing I read it the day I got it I read it the day I got approved from insurance and because I think we all face some frustration and I mean, I'm a nervous wreck all the time, like on my best day. So waiting for insurance approval was the, <sighs> it was absolutely horrifying. I hated, I hated waiting for the insurance approval and it only took a day. We had a day turnaround, which is, I am so lucky. I, first world problem is, oh, we have to wait a day, poor baby, but that's, that's not a bad thing. Um, so I wanted to do that. Uh, yeah. So let me know what, if you have your, do you have your, um, bariatric Bible? Do you keep it with you? Do you bring it to your appointments? Like how does your surgeon or your doctor, um, make you keep track of these things? Because we all get told these things all the time, but what is it really about? What is it? What are we really, really doing? So, um, until next time, I will hopefully see you all soon. Hopefully there'll be a video after this that you can take a peek at. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.